So hello everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, Orange Fab uh, webinar and uh, especially on the 5G. So uh, today we will uh, uh, try to inspire you uh, in order to uh, to inspire you as a startup to co-create uh, uh, a project with this new technology. So uh, during those uh, 45 minutes. Um, I will explain you briefly Orange Fab for the one who wasn't attending uh, our last uh, webinar and explain what is the win for Orange and for the startup being part of this uh, startup accelerator. Then uh, we will um, give you uh, more insight about the uh, main features of uh, 5G, the three main features and why uh, is it uh, useful uh, and this technology is useful. Uh, and then we will go to more concrete uh, use case, so B2B and B2C. For the B2B uh, focus, uh, we have a concrete use case that we launched uh, in Port of Antwerp, where we have a 5G test hub. Uh, and on the B2C, uh, the 5G is not already launched, but uh, we have ambitions and we have also um, some uh, use case to share from uh, other countries where the 5G uh, uh, has been launched. Uh, and then we will conclude uh, with uh, some practical details on how to apply uh, to Orange Fab. Um, at the end of the session, we will answer to your questions. So do not hesitate to ask your questions in the chat. Uh, and you can just uh, adapt uh, so you can put that you ask your questions to all panelists. So we can all uh, see your questions. Um, so Orange Fab, uh, what is uh, the main goal of Orange Fab? It is to develop a business-oriented uh, innovation project uh, with a startup and uh, Orange. So um, as Orange, we want to uh, innovate. We want to propose new products and services uh, to our customers. Uh, and uh, we want to do that with startups because uh, uh, we'd like to enjoy from their agility, but also uh, their expertise. And uh, collaborating uh, together helps us to innovate more rapidly. Uh, then we want to share with the startup uh, some assets uh, that we have uh, being a big corporate. So first, there is the networking and distribution. Um, we can put you in contact uh, with our uh, B2B customers, but we, we can also do a market research on our B2C or B2B customers. Uh, then we invite you to uh, events. So uh, we are sponsor of uh, several events, uh, startup events or tech events, where we invite you, you as a startup to have a booth. Uh, and uh, it is uh, yeah, in uh, Belgium or uh, uh, abroad, uh, such as VivaTech uh, in Paris or Dakar Digital Show in uh, Dakar, Senegal, um, and a lot of other. Um, it's also part of the biggest international corporate accelerator because Orange Fab is uh, a present in 17 countries. Uh, and uh, being part of this accelerator can help you uh, scale uh, your startup abroad, and we can easily put you in contact with the Orange Fab in the other countries. And last but not least, um, there is the mentoring and training. Uh, at Orange, we have uh, lots of different expertise uh, in HR, legal, uh, marketing. Uh, so we have a uh, lot of uh, team members that are there to help you uh, if you have specific questions. Um, you will have also access, uh, direct access uh, to sea level and an access to our 5G lab. Uh, so concerning uh, this 5G lab, uh, the main goal of this lab is um, to help companies to understand what 5G can bring and uh, stimulate uh, for innovation and co-innovation. So in this lab, you can meet uh, experts. Uh, to understand better the technology. Uh, you can also test and uh, make prototypes, and there will be also training uh, on this technology. So this uh, lab will open soon uh, in 2021 uh, in Antwerp, in the Beacon, and uh, being part of uh, Orange Fat will give you uh, privileged access 
to this lab. Um, so concerning uh, the subjects that we will uh, focus on uh, in 2021 for Orange Fab, um, so first uh, it's the 5G subjects. Uh, then uh, middle of the year we will uh, concentrate on hybrid working, and at the end of the year of uh, on smart homes. So uh, today uh, we will uh, explain you and inspire you about 5G and uh, how you as a startup could uh, propose products and services uh, to co-innovate. And uh, to go uh, into the subject, I will uh, first uh, invite uh, Santiago, uh, our engineer on 5G, to uh, explain us um, the main, the three main features of uh, 5G. Hey. Hello to everyone. I'll introduce to you to the main features of 5G. Uh, all these new features will uh, unlock an unlimited number of uh, use cases and inventions that would, uh, will uh, shape our future. Uh, the three main features are enhanced mobile broadband, massive machine types communications, and ultra reliable and low latency communications. Uh, the first one is uh, EMBB. Uh, this will multiply the data rates by 10 and will unlock a lot of uh, use cases related to the share of data. Uh, these use cases might be uh, virtual reality or augmented reality mobility. Uh, for example, a connected worker who, who can send a high quality video to a support colleague. Also, uh, downloading and uploading uh, a huge amount of data from the cloud and streaming video in high quality in any place, even the uh, crowded ones like stadiums, metro, or festivals. The second one is MMTC. Uh, this will allow us to connect up to a million devices per square kilometer. Uh, we are leaning towards a smart life, and this means that uh, there's more and more devices connected to the internet, and the Internet of Things will allow to connect to connect uh, our daily life objects. So MMTC will allow us to create smart uh, cities, also introduce sensors into machines to predict maintenance, and uh, connect medical devices that will control our health uh, between others. Finally, the the third main uh, feature is URLLC that will make possible some use cases related to uh, precision and also low time response. For example, connected vehicles uh, will communicate between each other to prevent car crashes. Also, remote, remote surgery and industrial control applications. Today, um, there's more and more devices and also data that is generated uh, every day. And soon 4G will not be able to support all of this. So we will need to move towards analog technology and uh, 5G will solve, the, solve this problem. Uh, and as we mentioned before, 5G will bring a, a lot of uh, an unlimited number of applications for uh, the future. For this one, let's talk a little more about 5G. Um, there are two types of 5G, the non-standalone and the standalone. The non-standalone additions are in a new antenna called New Radio, but uh, it still uses the infrastructure of 4G and all the core for, from 4G. The standalone also uh, addition this new antenna, but it has a completely new uh, infrastructure for the core, and this will allow us to profit for the full potential of uh, all of these features that I introduced, but also uh, introduce a new concept called uh, slicing that uh, allow us to create uh, virtual networks for, uh, for the companies and also uh, allocate res resources to, to the company needs. This will assure the company the um, quality of service and also assure the company that no one will overload uh, the network while they are using it. 
So here at Orange, we uh, believe that uh, 5G standalone is the best suit for our partners, and we are the first one in Belgium to do it. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Santiago, uh, for those uh, explanations. So know that uh, we have a uh, uh, better view on uh, what uh, is 5G uh, on a technical view. Um, Madani will explain us uh, what has been done uh, in the um, port of Antwerp. So Madani was project manager for uh, this project, uh, and uh, it will uh, give us more uh, concrete example of uh, application. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Juliette, and thanks, Santiago, for explaining 5G. So, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Madani Sherfa, and I work uh, in the innovation and business development team of Orange Belgium. So, I'm, uh, I'm really delighted to, to share with you one of the initiatives led by Orange Belgium in the field of 5G network for um, businesses, uh, basically. Um, you guys probably have heard about um, or read about uh, the deployment of uh, 5G in the port of Antwerp uh, somewhere uh, beginning of this year or even uh, late uh, last year um, or the year before, sorry. And I am going to give you some insight on uh, what we have been uh, doing there and what has been happening there. So Orange has decided to offer the uh, industry actors um, of uh, this area of Port of Antwerp, a unique opportunity to co-innovate and explore 5G technologies and its applications. Uh, well, the, the uncertainty around the 5G auctions in Belgium um, made Orange think, well, we need to offer our industry a chance not to be left behind in the race of uh, smartification of the industry uh, and the smartification of the logistics. So, uh, first, uh, probably a word on why we arrange uh, targeted uh, this um, port of Antwerp in uh, in this slide. Yes, thanks. Uh, um, so, why the port of Antwerp? O obviously, the port of Antwerp is the second largest port in Europe, and it generates a significant uh, amount of the business volume in Belgium. With um, if, if you can, if you look at the figures here, uh, you can be impressed by the fact that actually the port of Antwerp generates by itself five percent of the GDP of uh, of Belgium. So that's quite significant. And also one of the um, other reason is that POA has always been POA for port of Antwerp. Sorry. Uh, has always been a front runner in innovation and what we call the, the smart port. So a few examples of, uh, of their, um, I would say, status of, uh, of front leader is their involvement in Nextport. So Nextport is a, is a data sharing platform that um, is intended to help logistic industry to optimize their, uh, their operations and their business. Also, the development of APK, which is quite impressive, actually, this is a digital twin of the of the POA, helping uh, POA um, uh, become real, uh, really a, a smart uh, port. Um, another initiative that uh, Juliette also mentioned is the Beacon. Um, um, probably um, uh, you know this place in uh, in, in Antwerp where. Actually, the the port of Antwerp is one of the of the of the sponsors. Orange is also present there, but POA is obviously one of the major sponsors. So, so these are more or less um, the the reason why uh, we 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 choose to uh, to help POA and and go into this field and uh, and address uh, all the actors of this industry. So, what has exactly Orange been doing there? Uh, that's what we're gonna see in the in the in the next slide. So, uh, first, Orange uh, has developed and implemented a full uh, 5G SA campus. So, uh, Santiago touched upon the difference between SA and NSA. Bear in mind that this is an SA uh, and a unique uh, deployment in Europe of a full-scale SA network across the port of Antwerp. So Orange has deployed 
uh, as you as you can see, 14 sites with three different antennas per site, covering a significant part of the uh, of the port, and giving giving the opportunity in the in the in the uh, to the companies pre present in this coverage to experience 5G uh, performances. So you can see some of the tests we've been doing already uh, late uh, 2019 with. Uh, 1.4 gigabit per second in download and 7 uh, millisecond in latency. Uh, th this relates to um, the, the, the features of 5G that uh, Santiago uh, took you through uh, uh, during the previous uh, slide. So beside the radio coverage um, that is visible here uh, and where we cover almost 130 kilometers of, of, of the port, we also uh, have deployed a 5G core, and this is really important to understand uh, the fact that going to SA with a real 5G core uh, takes, uh, um, uh, uh, makes us Orange uh, a leader in, uh, in, in this specific field. Because uh, wherever you, you hear about the European de deployment of 5G, it's often a 5G radio controlled by a 4G core, a LTE core. And this is obviously addressing a lot of, uh, of uh, challenges. This is addressing the capacity challenges that uh, Santiago uh, touched upon. This is addressing also most of, uh, a lot of use cases for B2C, but for industry, we believe as a range that SA will bring the significant advantage and competitive advantage to people who leverage on these uh, capabilities uh, to actually uh, enhance the, their business. So, uh, I will come back to to the to the slicing feature afterwards. But, um, uh, now let's talk about um, well. This is obviously the, the the I would say the playground, the the toys that uh, we have deployed uh, last year. Now let's talk about the game we have been playing on this playground with uh, with our partners. On the next slide, so here is a few examples of um, the use case that we actually have implemented with our uh, partners. So here are, uh, I would say, five major examples. Let me take you through them. Um, so first is the Port of Antwerp uh, themselves, so the, sorry, the authority of uh, Port of, of Antwerp. Uh, they wanted to connect their tugboats, so their, um, their towing vessels, uh, to a 5G network to allow uh, their ships to stream in real time images and all the data like radar data, sonar data to the to a centralized control room. Using this real time information, the port of Antwerp can increase basically the uh, the efficiency and the safety of the towing vessels across the port. Obviously, these uh, small tech boats are are handling very, very heavy ships with very high value in it. So uh, improving the security uh, while um, uh, is very important for them. So 5G brings more capacity to transfer uh, high definition video in real time, but it also uh, with a lowered latency uh, for both video streaming and remote control of the camera in terms of tilt, direction, and zooming. This enhances the operation and the safety of the operations of the tugboat. So this is one use case. Uh, another one is the uh, Borealis case. Uh, Borealis is the leading provider of, uh, I would say, uh, innovative solution in the field of uh, polyolefin, uh, base chemicals, basically uh, chemistry. Uh, this is an industry in which, uh, which requires extremely high level of quality control. So thanks to a high secured data transmission allowed by the Orange 5G network, Borelis can securely connect plants equipment uh, uh, equipped with um, a cloud-hosted AI quality check system. Um, and they are, uh, this system is able to detect, based on the picture, the contamination of the sample. And this is directly sent uh, uh, to this um, uh, cloud system. The connectivity, uh, thanks to 
for instance, to 5G is um, is now completely released from cable infrastructure, which is a a real pain for such uh, uh, industries where uh, the 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 plants are often reshuffled and uh, and so the mobility is very important. And what is important is to keep security while going mobile. And this is uh, data isolation, which also uh, is allowed by the slicing in 5G which has seduced, um, I would say, uh, Borealis in experimenting this. Um, another use case uh, is uh, still in, in chemistry is BASF. So um, BASF is obviously a, a, a giant in chemical field. And for them, like the other, safety is really uh, a priority. And uh, BASF is closely following on innovation in the field of mission critical communications. They are looking into technology supported, um, uh, supporting the security use cases such as um, emergency communications, location-based alert, lone worker detection, man down, man down detection, etc. Everything related to the security of uh, people and equipment, basically. One basic test that they wanted to conduct is uh, finding out if uh, 5G could be a good replacement for each uh, push to talk infrastructure. So push to talk is a very old technology, but uh, still very used in uh, in this industry. But they wanted at the same time to support their one device policy. So instead of carrying several devices, what if an employee just had one recognized smartphone adapted to a harsh industrial environment and capable of supporting uh, all the applications and of course, the emergency communication. So can 5G radio cope with the field constraints like uh, metal pipes, metal buildings across the other plants? And does 5G slicing guarantee emergency communication on a clear channel in case of disaster? And even if communications are completely saturated by, uh, I would say, uh, panic calls. So that's uh, one of the features that um, BASF wanted to test in a real scale. Um, let me just have a word also on a very specific use case that we are currently uh, starting with Helicus. So this is a, a, a joint initiative with Helicus, Flanders Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Skyzer Recontrol, IMEC and some other actors, uh, of course Orange. Uh, we are partnering, partnering with these people to support the implementation of uh, drones for shipping medical samples and supplies. Um, so connected to the 5G standalone network, the, the drone would um, uh, rely on a high throughput and low latency, of course, and with a guaranteed level of quality based upon, again, the network slicing. So. Obviously, and which is a bit outside of the initial POA uh, 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 of the initial POA uh, objective, but uh, it was interesting to to, to tackle this. So, um, for Covestro, uh, I will not uh, too much talk about it. Let's uh, have a look at uh, what it looks like in video. I'm Peter Verdonk, I'm the Venture Manager uh, for our Anolint project, uh, which is a project that we want to implement in the coming years. Anolin is an intermediate that we will use to produce MDI, uh, which is then a building block uh, that we use later on in the production of, uh, for example, insulation uh, for housing and refrigerators. Uh, MDI is a strong, growing market in the world, and as uh, Covestro is willing to grow with that product, we will expand our installation uh, in the next years. We aim to expand uh, 185 kT of aniline on year basis. With 5G, we go to a full paperless world. It will enable us to an efficient environment where people can focus on their task and don't lose time on searching for paper and documentation. Now I brought my tablet. Uh, no more paper uh, PNID, so I have all documentation from the plant available in my hand. So with every unexpected issue that arrives, I have 
the necessary documents to consult. The biggest potential we see in using 5G is that we are able to connect to data online, fast and secure. 5G is for us uh, a new technology. We focus on safe and reliable operations at best cost. 5G will help us a lot in regards to safety. If we are able to perform with the tablets online on a very high speed, then we can make our maintenance in such a way that we can get external online assistance and we prevent that people have to come in the installation. This thing is great, but wouldn't it be better if I didn't have to use my hands right now? Same task, different device. Scan code. Start job, view image one. So the philosophy behind the augmented glasses is, is pretty important, especially when we go to work in the field and our technician needs his hands free to work. By that we can support through the augmented glasses. I see a huge impact of the augmented glasses uh, because through these glasses uh, we are even able to bring the operator in the control room straight to the field and he can guide the technician in his work to do. Hello Olivier speaking. Hello Olivier, this is uh, Stefan Meilemans. Um, I have a problem here on a pump. I hear a strange noise and I see some vibration on the shaft. Can you get a little bit closer to the pump? I think uh, I will need to send a specialist on the field to, uh, to repair this damage. Uh, what I suggest is to create a maintenance request with uh, medium level. Covestro is very thankful to Orange to be asked in this working group. We see a good opportunity uh, to bring new technology to our plant. So there you go, uh, maybe a quick explanation on what we have done on, uh, on this uh, specific use case uh, as a range. Um, uh, uh, we definitely uh, are uh, a key player in the connectivity, but we helped also uh, basically Covestro uh, select the proper devices, select the proper uh, remote assistant platform and digital workflow engine. And also we actually implemented the, uh, this workflow. So we are really eager to um, go beyond uh, just connectivity and probably that's uh, where you guys can help us uh, with, with your new ideas and probably uh, new use cases in the field of devices, in the field of platforms or whatsoever. So thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Melanie, for sharing those uh, specific use cases and congratulations for this uh, great job uh, that you already done uh, on the point of Antwerp. Uh, so now we will move on to uh, the B2C part. So uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Veronique Maréchal. So she's uh, uh, working in the B2C uh, department and more specifically uh, on 5G uh, projects. Thank you, uh, Juliette, and uh, hello, everybody. Indeed, I'm here today to uh, give you some inspiration uh, to develop also new innovative services uh, for B2C uh, customers. Our intention uh, at Orange uh, is uh, to offer a unique uh, 5G experience to our customers, uh, and for this is one of the reasons why we haven't launched yet. Uh, because we want to be able to exploit all the, five, the, the opportunities that 5G will offer. Also, if we look at uh, what the customer expects as the uh, most uh, important benefit of 5G, uh, we see that 55% uh, of our customers expect 5G to bring speed as uh, the major benefit. While you have seen it with Santiago, there are other benefits also to 5G that 5G can bring. And this is a paradigm because what we see as well is that for the moment 4G is already uh, satisfying our customer because if we look at uh, the satisfaction uh, level uh, with the, the speed to uh, uh, share pictures of 5, we see that 77% of our customers are already happy with 4G. While uh, to uh, where we look at the download speed, we see that almost 70% are satisfied. So for the moment, there is not really a pain point. Uh, speed is still uh, satisfying our customers. But as Santiago mentioned as well, 
because uh, the data use is increasing so rapidly, there will be a point where uh, dissatisfaction will decrease because our network will start to be saturated. So we need to find a compelling story to uh, in, uh, convince our customer to adopt 5G and also come up with a unique experience. And this unique experience is based on the following pillar. First of all, uh, we need to uh, come up with an outstanding network strategy. So for the moment, we are fine-tuning this strategy to be able to offer uh, the best uh, 5G experience. Second to this, we need to offer uh, uh, the right devices because, of course, this is the tool that our customer we have in their hands and will, which will provide them this experience. So it's key to uh, select and, test and certify the devices that will uh, enable our customer to benefit from all those IT uh, use cases. Next to this, we also are working on use cases which will enable us to demonstrate the power of 5G and uh, give the customer the opportunity also to discover new ways to uh, entertain, uh, new ways to uh, enjoy life. And finally, and this is where we count on, on you as well, uh, we want to come up with innovative daily life services uh, to give them other reasons to use 5G. Of course, we know that uh, we are almost uh, all addicted to our smartphone. It's not the idea to uh, make this as even further, but of course, if we come up with uh, daily life services that make our life easier, that allow us to organize our life better, like uh, uh, all the smartification of uh, the application, this is even better for uh, all of us. So as we haven't launched anything yet and we are in full development, we are going to share with you some inspiration uh, because some countries and uh, other continents are ahead of us for 5G. So we have included here examples and uh, when you receive the, the PDF of the presentation, you'll be able to, uh, to scroll on the um, let's say, on the links that are presented in this, in this slide to give you examples of what all the countries are doing. Here we have example of Japan with SoftBank. We have also example that you can find easily uh, of South Korea, which is one of the countries where 5G is the most advanced at this moment. Uh, closest to us, we have also UK that has launched uh, already uh, almost 18 months ago where you have EE, the leader, the network leader, uh, where you will be able as well to see their uh, augmented reality demonstration with the group BASC. And next to this, we also have Vodafone UK belonging to the group Vodafone, who has uh, um, used uh, an icon uh, person, an iconic person as uh, Lewis Hamilton to demonstrate the power of and the speed uh, of 5G. So I invite you to uh, to look at the video uh, in uh, in its totality because you will have the opportunity to see Lewis Hamilton uh, piloting himself those drones and this is really impressive. So with these videos and this example, we want to we wanted to give you some inspiration and of course you can imagine that Orange Group is also working on this. So there is a, a last example of what Orange Spain has been doing in augmented reality in the stadium. Uh, which is also uh, quite amazing because it gives you a full immersive experience. It allows you to uh, uh, you really to see and live an event in a different manner. And now we turn to you because we all we hope that we will find also uh, innovative services that will be able uh, to offer our customer when we launch 5G uh, to the B2C segment. Um, thank you, Veronique, and thank you all uh, for um, sharing uh, all the possibilities that we have uh, with 5G. But now, dear startups, uh, we want to know if you are ready to take this challenge and to innovate with us uh, in order to offer a great experience and innovative experience uh, to our customers. Uh, so now I'd like to invite uh, Kami, who is responsible for the selection of the startups, to explain uh, the practical details uh, of uh, the for the application. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Kami Sorato, working at Orange Fab, as Juliet said, and I will share you the the key information you need to know regarding this 5G track and the application process. 
and the, the different steps you have to be aware of. So first, uh, the acceleration timing. So applications are still open till the, the beginning of February. The deadline is that is on February the 10th. Um, after that, we will run through a selection phase. Uh, we will uh, let you know during the, the month of February whether your application um, will go uh, to the next uh, selection step or not. Um, after that, uh, we will select five startups that will uh, participate to a pitch contest in front of uh, a jury made of uh, orange people. And during this pitch contest, we want, of course, to know more about yourself, but also how you imagine your partnership with Orange. Um, so two startups will go to the last selection step, which is an assessment workshop. Uh, during this workshop, we will define precisely uh, the project, the innovation project we will work on together. And after that, uh, if the project is selected, the acceleration starts. So um, I let you know a little more about um, all um, the acceleration process. So first, uh, we define together the um, innovation project during the assessment workshop, but also in the few weeks after this workshop. Uh, then we create a, a proof of concept uh, together, and if the, the proof of concept goes su successful, sorry, um, we start uh, the commercial rollout or the internal adoption, depending on how the project is and what the project objectives are. So. These are the, the three main steps you have to be aware of. And on top of that, of course, we offer several benefits that Juliette has already mentioned. So the international network, the VIP access to our Fangi Lab, also the access to our customers and to our C-levels at Orange, um, which is something really, really amazing because it helps promoting the project within the organization. And at Orange Fab, we are very thankful to have uh, their support. Um, so, to give you a little more inspiration as well, this is a, a short list of uh, technologies that we are interested in to dig in together with you. Um, so, of course, AR, VR, smart mobility, smart city, autonomous robots, and also massive IoT, but also we are interested in basically in every use cases and every technologies that uh, 5G can boost and leverage. So, if you think that there is a match, uh, please uh, apply, and regarding the application, here is how to apply. So you have to go to our website, orangefab.be, or you can Google orangefab. It should be very easy to find. Um, and uh, then uh, you just have to go to the Apply Now section, and it, it takes no longer than 10 minutes. You just have to explain, you, explain us um, your activity, your company, um, your motivation in joining Orange Fab, uh, and also share um, some presentation elements uh, of your startup, and then uh, that's it. Your your application is in our system, and we will get back to you to let you know um, the next step of the of the acceleration process. So I think that was the the main uh, the key information you have to know. Um, so of course, if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to ask them in the chat and. Now uh, I leave the floor to, to Juliette. So thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you, Camille, for sharing those details. Um, so and uh, to all of you for your participation. So here are the contact details uh, if you need to uh, reach us uh, after this presentation. Uh, but now uh, we will answer to uh, those questions, uh, the questions uh, uh, that we received in the chat. Uh, I already see uh, one question uh, concerning the, the if uh, uh, the startups need to be in a specific industry. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we didn't um, uh, precise that uh, at Orange Fab we look for uh, startups that are already mature, that already have some clients, but we don't look at a specific industry. Uh, as we saw in the presentation, uh, it's uh, really broad. And uh, there are lots of uh, different fields where we can apply uh, 5G. So uh, this is uh, not uh, some. This is not. Uh, uh, we, no, we don't need a specific industry uh, to apply to our range fund. Uh, okay. Thank you for that. I received other question as well. So the first one is for Madani. Um, Madani, what are the next steps uh, for the Port of Antwerp test hub? 
obviously we uh, we are certainly looking at other use cases and there's uh, plenty of room for improvement uh, in both uh, I would say application field and also devices field one of the major I would say challenge of, uh, of these use cases are to find uh, proper and industrial devices um, smartphones but not only uh, captures uh, uh, modems uh, that are suited for both for industry and 5g sa this, this is one specific um, uh, topic now uh, commercially of course we are preparing the, the commercial launch of all these offers to to the industry so the the next step i would say is the um, the scaling up of these use cases uh, into uh, into an industrial exploitation of, of these use cases. And okay. uh, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, from a geographic point of view is just one point. So of course we will open up this use case gradually to uh, to uh, to the rest of the Belgian territory, of course. Okay, sorry, Melania, I interrupted you no, because no. I had another another question uh, linked to to the port of Antwerp. Um, what, what can be the role of uh, a startup or a scale up in, in this kind of initiative? Well, obviously, uh, uh, a, a, a very large part of the effort that the the, the very small team that uh, that did this project is uh, finding uh, partners. For devices, as I, as I just said, for devices, for applications um, that have, uh, I would say, uh, added value for any industrial process or security process, uh, and we believe that um, uh, we, as a as a long living operator and industries as uh, giants and I would say dinosaurs of uh, of the industry are really looking into fresh eyes of, uh, of startup and scales up uh, to actually uh, broaden our view on what is feasible, what is possible, and uh, I would say remove our own boundaries as a as a as a historical leader. And uh, yeah, obviously we are really eager to 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 uh, I would say welcome new ideas. Okay, thanks, Melanie. I think we received another question. Um, Juliette, I don't know if you if you saw it, but is it still relevant to apply, or is having customers uh, an absolute must at this point? Is it still relevant? Um, so, do you? I I'm not sure I understand. Um, so, yeah, it's important. I, actually. Uh, we need to we, we work with uh, with com with startups that have already uh, something uh, on the market. It's not only because it's not an incubator. So Orange Fab is an accelerator. That's why we need to have uh, something uh, more than just an idea. That's uh, the main uh, point. Um, but uh, yeah, so because you were talking uh, about Thomas, you were talking about innovators. So we don't uh, accelerate on the idea, but we need to have something more concrete. Uh, but uh, if you want to have uh, more details on that, uh, we can uh, you can uh, write uh, on uh, my email and we can have a chat around that because I don't know if you have already uh, a startup or, or is it just an idea. Um, but uh, just uh, yeah, to as uh, as I, I mentioned, uh, you need to have already. Uh, an implemented uh, startup uh, with uh, yeah with already some clients is something uh, important. Yes, thank you, Thomas, for your question. This is really important. So, if it's related to your your situation, uh, maybe you, we can uh, yes yeah, set up a call together to to know more about precisely what you are currently doing. So, I think this is the next step. So, you you have our yes you, you have our contact. So, please send us an email and we will uh, we will plan that uh, definitely. Um, maybe another question that I, I received um, is for you, Juliet. Um, what is the price of, of this accelerator? Um, so the the accelerator is completely free. 
so the as I said, uh, the win-win is that uh, for us uh, we uh, we want to innovate uh, more rapidly and offer different things to our clients. Uh, but of course, uh, if we need your solutions, we will uh, pay for this project as well. So the idea is not that you work for free uh, for us. Uh, but being part of this program is completely uh, free for you. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, thanks, Juliet. Uh, I think we are we are running out of time now. So if if you have any further question, you can of course contact us at uh, orangefab uh, at orangefab.de. Um, we will share also this, the recording of the presentation. Um, in our uh, in, in YouTube, so we will share you the link uh, once it is online, and we will share also as well, of course, uh, the slides that we shown uh, beginning of next of next week. So, thank you all. Thank you, Juliette. If you if you have any any last word, no problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, uh, and uh, have a great uh, weekend. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs> have a great Bye. weekend. Thank you. Thanks to all the presenters as well. Thank yes, you. Have a great weekend. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.